At Harold Newman Arena, Jamestown Blue Jays, Dakota Wesleyan Tigers close out the regular season today and hope close out the regular season in the G-Pack. And indeed, yes, this is it for G-Pack basketball for the regular season today. Again, the postseason tournament begins on Wednesday with the top four seeds hosting first round tournament games. So what does it look like going in? Women first, Dort, well, we've known for a couple of weeks, of course, that they're the regular season champion at 21 and 0, and of course, number one in the poll, and in most people's minds, the favorite to take the championship. It's good. Let's face it, it's just gonna be hard for uh, good any good team to, to beat them. There are plenty of good teams in this country, but Dort is uh, very, very strong. Concordia will be the second seed. We do know that. They're 16 and five, but as we mentioned, the Dakota Wesleyan team that's here today is tied with Briarcliff for third at 14 and seven. Then Northwestern's in fifth at 13 and eight. Jamestown and Morningside share the number six spot at 12 and nine. And then it's Doan at 10 and 11, a game ahead of nine and 12 Hastings for eight. And what happens today besides Dakota Wesleyan playing here, Hastings is at Doan. Tigers win, they're the eighth seed. If Hastings wins, then uh, they have the good shot to be the eighth seed, although there are still scenarios where Doan would still make the eighth seed even if Hastings wins. Morningside is at Briarcliff this afternoon in Sioux City in the battle of the Sioux City teams. Dort is at Northwestern with Concordia at home to Midland and Mount Marty at the College of St. Mary. Again, we do know that Dort's the one seed, Concordia is the second seed. The third seed comes down to either Briar Clifford, Dakota Wesleyan. And Briar Cliff wins a tie break over Dakota Wesleyan, so for DWU to be the three seed, they need Morningside's help. But we do know that uh, DWU in good position to play at home. There still is a scenario where they would finish in fifth. That's an important game for Briarcliff today. Again, the Jimmies will be either the fifth, sixth, or seventh seed in the women's G-Pack postseason tournament. All right, what about the men? Uh, you need a slide rule and several other things to try to figure it all out. Because Hastings, when we left the air, they've gone to overtime on Wednesday night against the Concordia in Seward. Hastings once led by 16. They still led by 10 with just over six minutes left. Concordia came back and won it in overtime, 69-67. So going into the final day of the regular season in the G-Pac men's race, there's a three-way tie for the league. Concordia, Northwestern, and Hastings are all at 14 and five. Morningside's a game behind them at 13 and six. And then Dort's at 12 and seven in fifth. And then the Jimmies in 6th and 11 and 8. DWU, who we'll see later today, and Briarcliff are both at 9 and 10. Of course, the teams for the tournament have been set for a couple of weeks, but the seedings all will be figured out today by someone, and hopefully it won't make their head hurt like it <laughs> started making my head hurt yesterday trying to figure out, but uh, Lucas Mormon and the people of the GPAC office will have that work ahead of them today after all the regular season games get done. Midland at Concordia, Hastings at Doan, Dort at Northwestern, Morningside at Briarcliff, the rest of the schedule today. But the possibilities for the Jimmies in men's play, well, possibly as high as the fifth seed. Again, they cannot be the fourth seed. We know they're going to be on the road could be the fifth seed and could be the sixth. It's gonna be one of those two. But we'll get it all sorted out at the end of the day. And again, we'll let you know of our coverage plans in the early part of next week. For the Jimmies Wednesday in the G-Pack postseason tournament. But the regular season is still to end today. We'll look a little bit further at this Dakota Wesleyan women's team next as Jamestown hosts Dakota Wesleyan close out the regular season. Come on over to Harold Newman Arena for one more Saturday afternoon of basketball 
in this regular season. If not, stay right here with us because there's more of our pregame coming up on Jamestown 107.1. This is the voice of the Jimmies. Sign on bonuses $10,000 for full time RNs or LPNs working PM or NOC shifts, and $10,000 for full time NOC weekend package positions, and $5,000 for part time PM shifts. Also offering $5,000 for full time CNAs working PM shifts or weekend package, day PM or NOC shifts. Dietary positions available also. Apply at smphealth.org slash Ave Maria. You love sports. So do we. You know, the thrill of victory and the agony of injury. Hey, injuries happen. Thankfully, JRMC Orthopedics is ready to act fast. Jamestown athletes and their fans can choose the home team for their care. Call 952-4878 for quick injury attention. Home team sports medicine. It's right here at JRMC. Hit the ground running. The pain brings me to my knees. Hip, hip, hooray. Foot pain, knee pain, hip pain. Oh, my, have I got the solution for you. Apex Physical Therapy and Wellness Center is just the place to help you out with any orthopedic pains. So let us take the weight off your shoulders and get on over to Apex. They're the bee's knees. Call Apex about your joint pain today at 701-952-2739 to schedule your appointment today. Johnny B's Brickhouse, famous for their pizza, but wait, there's pasta and their amazing wings and fresh ground hamburgers, tasty salads and appetizers too. And for dessert, you can't beat their sweet sticks. Come on out for Tuesday night trivia and live entertainment every Thursday night. The place to be is Johnny B's, smack dab in the middle of Main Street, downtown Jamestown. And remember, for delivery and carry out, call 952-8777. Town to go to Wesleyan. Harold Newman Arena to round out the GPAC regular season in basketball. <laughs> yeah, almost three months since these schools played. So the refresher on DWU, again, relatively young, especially with Isabel Enan out of the lineup. And in fact, a freshman is their leading scorer. And this was an accomplished, very accomplished player in South Dakota high school basketball, Emma Yost from Wagner. Emma is the fourth leading scorer in the league at 15.2 a game, a good post player, and draws a lot of fouls, gets to the line a lot. And they have a good rim protector, too, who is another freshman, Shalane Nagel from Springfield, South Dakota, second in this conference in blocks. So it's a pretty formidable front line that DWU has, but on the wings, good shooters, too, and Morgan Edelman, a junior, and Talia Hayes, a sophomore. Yeah, the depth... Not quite there, there is still a little with sophomore Riley Rosenquist, but uh, it's a blow for this team, missing uh, Enan for the rest of this season, her senior year, because of a torn ACL. And back-to-back -back, uh, wins and losses in the last six for DWU, so they, like the Jimmies, want to take a, something good into the GPAC postseason tournament. Again, a win today, and even if they lose, still pretty good chance that they'd have a home game on Wednesday night, but if they win today over Jamestown, they would assure themselves of getting to play in the most unique Corn Palace on Wednesday evening in the first round. So for Jamestown, they would like to just bounce back after what was uh, a difficult game against a very good team in Briarcliff. And the thoughts of their head coach, Thad Sankey, are next on our pregame from Harold Newman Arena as Jamestown meets Dakota Wesleyan. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the Voice of the Jimmies. Otter Tail Power Company would like to remind you about the importance of high school athletics in the lives of children. Those extracurricular activities play a role in the education and development of those kids involved and provide a way for kids to learn some of life's most important lessons. Lessons that will take them through life with a sense of accomplishment and pride. Otter Tail Power Company would like to salute those athletes coaches, and fans who make every season one to remember. 
Where do you find the friendliest staff, largest selection, lowest prices, and the freshest produce? Hugo's in Jamestown. But what if you can't go to the store? Hugo's Family Marketplace offers online shopping. You can shop all the departments and all the sales at GoHugos.com. Choose pickup or Hugo's delivery service, and they'll do the in-store shopping for you. Hugo's Family Marketplace, online shopping at GoHugos.com. You're going to find more low prices, more great stuff when you go to Hugo's. For this uh, final day of regular season games for the Jimmies, Dakota Wesley and the Dad Sankey is uh, with us and uh, a chance to bounce back today. And uh, I, I know you feel like uh, it, it just wasn't quite all together. I know the f team felt like it too, but uh, I'm sure there was the opportunity to mostly get past that, but to uh, take what was learned Wednesday into what's going into today. Yeah. I you know, we didn't play our best game on Wednesday, and we know that and we felt that, and we played a top-level opponent. Yes. And, and the combination of both those things makes it really challenging to win, whether you're at home or on the road. And um, we'll have the same thing tonight in terms of a top-level opponent, and, and it's up to us to see, you know, can we start out by playing a great game in the first quarter? Now, even though they're without uh, a solid player for them in Enan, one of the good bench players in Frida, this is still, and this is a pretty young team, and for the young team they have, this DWU team's accomplished a lot. Absolutely, and, and they're just gritty and tough, and a lot of the trademark pieces about Dakota Wesleyan, um, you know, regardless of age, you know, this team has it, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we felt it. It's been almost three months since we played them, which is crazy. <laughs> you know, Faith and I were talking about that this morning. Three months, holy smokes, but, <laughs> um, but at the same time, like, both of our teams have grown and matured through the season and have a much better um, identity, I guess, of ourselves. And so that's a little bit of what of what these late season matchups are, is when it has been so long since we've seen each other, you know, who, who's grown in which ways? How does that benefit you? Are there advantages that we can that we can push and 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 you know navigate? And then, you know, when it comes down to crunch time minutes, can we finish it out? You've got games to play today, you hope several more, but a uh, special day for both Kaya and for Audrey. And they've given so much of this program and they play on this floor for uh, possibly the final time. But uh, what have they given to your program? Well, uh, you know, for, for both of them, I, I, when, when I see those, those women, it's, it's different things. And, you know, for Audrey, she's such a story in, in individual and personal development. And, you know, I laugh about, about it because she did start as a freshman. You know, our, our senior post player, um, uh, Audrey's freshman year blew her knee out in the second game of the year and we didn't have a backup after Audrey so she played big minutes and and you know it didn't matter if she was good or not she was playing big minutes we needed her to do that well you know she's come such a long way in her freshman year we were working on hey just catch the ball right and then we were working on after you catch the ball don't travel you know and and to see the polished uh, offensive threat that she's become has been just just incredible. The, the work, the behind the scenes, the off hours, the summertime, um, all those reps and the focus that she has on that individual improvement is is a huge part of the story that she's written here. You know, and then and then for Kaya, part of it is is her freshman year, we were a year into the GPAC. And we didn't come into the GPAC. You know, the GPAC teams didn't say, hey, welcome, Jamestown. You guys are great, awesome. They said, we're, we're going to try to beat the crap out of you. And, <laughs> and, and so part of Kaya's story is, is that growth and the competitiveness and working our way up and through the, the best league in the country. And how does that go and what does it look like to put ourselves you know, in position for another postseason run is, is really a special thing. And, and just, just the grit and the toughness, physical, uh, but mental too, of, of the grind. And then, my gosh, like, you want to come back and play a fifth year. Yeah. And, and you know, for, for most of us, before this whole fifth year thing was, was a thing for yeah. COVID, yeah. most of us knew how hard it was to play four. And now we have, five, you know, five-year players, and, and Kai has just been an incredible leader for us. And uh, just probably too many things to list in terms of the, the leadership pieces that she brings our team. Well, it's uh, be a big day for her and for Audrey and for this uh, Jamestown team as they take on DWU. Thank you again, sir. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Coming up, starting lineups in the opening tip.
From Harold Newman Arena, it's Jamestown and Dakota Wesleyan on Jamestown 107.1. This is the voice of the Jimmies. Some of us were born to farm. Some diesels, like Senex Premium Diesel, were born to fuel. Senex Ruby Fieldmaster comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn to reduce particulate matter and keep filters cleaner for longer. Fuel your equipment like a pro with Senex Ruby Fieldmaster and leave typical number two diesel to the amateurs. Senex Premium Diesel. Diesel that doesn't mess around. At Unison Bank, we provide financial solutions for customers to meet their needs today and achieve their dreams tomorrow. From personal banking services like checking accounts, mortgage, and auto loans, to business banking services, at Unison Bank, we offer financial solutions with prompt responses and quality service. Visit unisonbank.com for more information. Located in Jamestown, Linton, and Wishick, as well as Gilbert, Arizona. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. You know you don't really want that hurry up, bought on the cheap, not sure what I got insurance coverage. Good, because Farmers Union Insurance Agents do things just a little different. We'll work with you personally for home, auto, business, or farm insurance and tailor the exact coverage plan you need because we're not satisfied until you are. Different, you bet. Farmers Union Insurance, simply different. Good luck to the Blue Jays and Jimmies from your local Farmers Union agent, Steve Benyon. Not all products underwritten by Farmers Union Insurance. Forecast details. Forecast details from Ag Central for the rest of the day. High temps in the lower 50s, breezy south southwest winds gusting into the 30s, cloudy overnight, lows in the mid 20s. And for the rest of Sunday, mostly sunny, highs back up to around 40. Sunday night, cloudy, lows around 31. And by Monday, mostly sunny, highs will reach near 60. A chance of rain or snow before midnight Monday night, lows around 11. For more weather anytime, log on to NewsDakota.com. Jamestown and Dakota Wesleyan at Harold Newman Arena, the University of Jamestown, to wrap up the G-Pack basketball regular season. Here are the women's starting lineups. First for Dakota Wesleyan. Maya Wilson runs the point of five for seniors. She's from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 2.6 points, 1.7 rebounds per game, two assists a game. On the wings, Talia Hayes, a 5'7 sophomore from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Nine points a game, 2.2 rebounds, 30 made three-pointers. Morgan Edelman, a 5'7 junior from Menno, South Dakota. 8.9 points and eight rebounds per game for Morgan. 2.9 assists, that's sixth in the G-Pack. 1.9 steals a game, that's 10th in the league. And this is a fairly formidable front line of freshmen. Emma Yost, the 5'11 freshman from Wagner, South Dakota, their leading scorer, 15.2 points a game in fourth in the league, six rebounds, and an 80% foul shooter. She's been to the line 131 times. She's sixth in the league in free throw percentage. And Shalane Nagel, a six-foot freshman from Springfield, South Dakota. Nagel and Yost, by the way, were both teammates at Wagner, which is a very good program in the middle classification of South Dakota girls high school basketball. For Nagel, 9.9 .9 points, 5 rebounds, 52% shooter. That's 10th in the league. She has 39 block shots. That's 2nd in the league. Jason Christensen, a DWU alum in his 14th year as head coach with a good record, 295 and 152 and the 2018 D2 Women's National Championship to his credit. The assistant, uh, the associate head coach is Celeste Beck, uh, Celeste Beck the assistant Shaley Nagel, the student assistant Chloe Sink. For the Jamestown Jimmies, Kaya Tower starts for the final time in the regular season on this floor. The 5'6", 50-year senior from Big Fork, Minnesota, 12.8 points, 4.2 rebounds a game, second leading scorer in the history of this program. Third in the G-Pack and assist at 3.7 a game. Second in the league in free throw percentage and with a chance to break that school record. Kate Cordes, the 5'8", sophomore from Shakopee, Minnesota, 15 0.4 points a game for the leading scorer on this team. 4.6 rebounds, 73 made threes, which is first in the league. Her percentage of 45% is second. She's in the top 15 in both nationally. Kate Busick, the 5'9 junior from Fargo Shanley. 5.8 points and 5.4 rebounds per game for Kate. Jalen Martinson, the 5'9 junior from Devils Lake. 4.8 points and two rebounds. And Audrey Rodakowski, the other senior, playing her final regular season game at home today. The six-footer from 
Dickinson, 13.9 points a game for Audrey, 6.1 rebounds. Tied for ninth in the G Pack in scoring. And she is ninth in the league in rebounds. And 25 block shots has her sixth in the league. And of course, the other night, she became the 25th Jimmy women's player to score 1,000 points. She has 1,002. Pat Sankey, the head coach of the Jimmies, in his sixth year here, 101 and 75. 11th season overall as a head coach, 175 and 159. Faith Brindle is his assistant. Patrick Swenson, the graduate assistant. Jamestown, again in orange today with black numerals and letters in white trim. Dakota Wesleyan in uh, their road. Uh, royal blue uniforms with white numerals and letters and white trim. And the uh, Jimmies will uh, first bring Audrey Rodakowski out on the floor to uh, salute her. Uh, you heard the story that Thad Sankey just told about what Audrey had to uh, do in her freshman year when another player was hurt and play before uh, she really uh, knew a whole lot about what college basketball was about but that said what development she has made in all points of her game to the point where she reached a thousand the other night and uh, and what can you say about Kaya Tower and what she has done for this program we're almost ready for Dakota Wesleyan and Jamestown back with the action next on Jamestown 107.1 this is the voice of the Jimmies Two Rivers Activity Center in Jamestown is now hiring. Track has openings for several part-time positions. Track offers a flexible schedule. We will work with you to make a schedule that fits your busy lifestyle. Track also offers a fun work atmosphere, and every employee of JPRD receives an employee pass, which provides free green fees at Hillcrest Golf Course, complimentary open skate at the Winter Sports Building, and free daily admission into Two Rivers Activity Center. Learn more about our open positions and apply online today at trackjamestown.com. Building a business requires strength, courage, and a solid reputation. So, when you're ready to build a building to house your business or remodel your existing business, you want the same qualities in your commercial construction contractor. And that's where Hillerood Construction comes in. Trusted, experienced builders who specialize in commercial building construction. Their experience saves you time, stress, and money. So visit hillerudconstruction.com and let's get building. Why choose professional eye care centers? Let me count the whys. First, there are now four great doctors to see. Dr. Frank, Dr. Freilich, Dr. Jangula, and now welcoming Dr. Bond. Next is their many locations. You can now see one of their spectacular doctors in Jamestown, Valley City, Carrington, Edgeley, Ellendale, and Lemoore. And finally, their fantastic frame selection. And yes, all of their frames and lenses are backed up by warranty. Visit ProEyeCareCenters.com and make an appointment today. Professional eye care centers, clearly the best. Your home for UJ Jimmies, AM 1400 KQDJ Jamestown, and 107.1 K296HH Jamestown. Where has this season gone? It's to the end of the regular season today for Jamestown and Dakota Wensley, and end of the regular season in the G Pack. We'll keep you updated on the other scores, of course, as we continue this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Come on over to Harold Newman Arena, though, for one more time in the regular season anyway. Of course, the, the Jimmies, both teams, again, we know that they'll both be on the road for the GPAC postseason opener on Wednesday. And it could be anywhere from the fifth through the seventh seed for the Jimmy women, the fifth or the sixth seed for the Jimmy men. And we'll have action for you on Wednesday here on Jamestown 107.1, and again, we're endeavoring to also to have action for you on Q101. So our aim is to bring you both games on Wednesday night. We'll be somewhere, and we'll make the arrangements to bring the other one to you, hopefully. And we will let you know about that the first part of next week. So the teams are on the floor for Dakota Wesleyan, Talia Hayes, Morgan Edelman, Maya Wilson, Emma Yost, and Shelley Nagel. For Jamestown, Kate Cordes, Kaya Tower, Kate Music, Jalen Martinson, and Audrey Rodakowski. Jamestown will shoot at the bucket to our right in this first half to go to Wesley and to the left, but if you're watching on the 
Jimmy Athletic's YouTube page. Their perspective is the opposite of ours. So you'll see Dakota Wesley into the left and Jamestown. Joe Dakota Wesley to the right and Jamestown to the left if you're watching. Hopefully I have it straight. Left, right, yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> Well, we got Twins Baseball here on Jamestown 107.1 tomorrow, 12 noon from spring training. It'll be the third preseason game for the Twins. The Boston Red Sox will be the opponent. And how about the Jamestown Blue Jay girls? What after they had a victory last night in Williston, so both Jay teams make the WDA tournament. Blue Jay girls in Minot, around 145 on Thursday here in Jamestown 107.1. Jamestown boys in Bismarck around six. Shalane Nagel and Audrey Rodakowski to jump center. Ball in the air, tipped by Rodakowski to Jalen Martinson, Jamestown with it first. And we hope you enjoy the action on this Saturday afternoon here on Jamestown 107.1. Kaya Tower up top with a screen for Rodakowski. Maya Wilson trying to work her way through it. It's to Rodakowski in the lane. Drives, turns around on Yost and left it short. Rebound for Morgan Edelman for Dakota Wesley. And down four to Talia Hayes. Worked up top to Nagel, playing in a high post. Right wing, it is Edelman. This is a good shooter to Nagel. Again for Edelman on the left side. 13 on the shot clock now. Screen set for her. It's into the right wing quarter. Wilson trying to drive one hand runner in the lane left short. Audrey Rodakowski has her first rebound today. To Kate Busick and into the front court for Kate Cordes on the right wing. No score yet. Cordes with a lob. Jalen Martinson right lane line. Dished him out to Tower. Left wing Busick. Three for Kate. Off the right rim. Battle for that rebound. And it's tipped from Shalene Nagel to Delia Hayes for Dakota Wesley. Morgan Edelman for the blue clad Tigers. Right baseline Emma Yost in the double team. And Jalen Martinson's able to steal it away. Rodakowski helped out on the defense too. Busick in the front court. A minute 15 in. Still no score. Kaya Tower right wing three trying to change it. She did! Tower in her final regular season home game for the fifth year senior has her 38-3 of the year. 3-0 Jamestown. Yost for Morgan Edelman for DWU. Yost playing a high post again. Cuts toward the lane after she passed it to Edelman who drives down the right left lane line and scores in a tough move. Hit the floor but Edelman scores to bring Dakota Wesley into within a point. Jamestown leads 3-2. A minute 50 has been played. Cordes on the left wing for the Jimmies. Hayes and Yost both over their garter. Right corner tower. Right block. Audrey Bonikowski turns around. Drives on. Nagel and laid it in. First two for Audrey. So the two seniors have scored the Jamestown points so far. They're up 5-2 over Dakota Wesleyan. 7.47 in the first quarter. Wilson. Drives on Cordes, backs it out for Nagel. A three straight away good for Shalane Nagel, six footer, but now she's hit 18 three pointers this season, and the game's tied for the first time at five apiece. Seven and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Tower off a screen with another three. She's good. Kaya is two for two. Back to a three point Jamestown lead at eight to five. Lob, and it's out of bounds. EWU turns it over as they bring in Riley Rosenquist, 5'7", sophomore from Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. 8.7 points, 4.7 rebounds per game. And they also bring in Anna Campbell. She's a 5'11", senior from Lead, South Dakota. 4.3 points, 2.1 boards per game. Andrew Rudakowski in a high post to Jalen Martinson. Right wing Kaya Tower for Jamestown, who's up 8'5", about three minutes in. Fade away Rudakowski from eight, but this one's left short. Anna Campbell with the rebound for Dakota Wesley. To Morgan Edelman, to Riley Rosenquist on the right side. On the wing, right side, Campbell. She took the return feed from Hayes, drives on the left block, and got fouled by Rodakowski. Good move by Anna Campbell. And draws the first foul of the game. Yes, it was November 29th when they played at the Corn Palace, and it was a DWU win at 81-71. First free throw is good here for Anna Campbell. 61% at the line. Second is off the back rim and missing. And the rebound by Kate Busick. 
8-6 Jamestown leads Dakota Wesley in 6.42 in the first quarter. Lob from Tower to Rodakowski. Audrey left of the lane with a drive, and she's caught. Hooking Anna Campbell around the shoulder. Oh, that's two for Audrey in short order, and that is going to bring Hannah Hoggle into the game. The 5'11 junior from Carrington. 3.8 points and 3.3 rebounds a game, but it's early foul trouble for Audrey Rodakowski in her final regular season home game. Dakota, Dakota Wesleyan with it down 8 6 to Jamestown, 6 33 in the first quarter. Emma Yost for the Tigers with a handoff, and Jalen Martinson is caught bumping Riley Rosenquist, and there's three team fouls on Jamestown, and the first on Jalen. Rosenquist scored 16 in that game for DWU way back in November. Isabel Eden, who we've told you is out for the year with a torn ACL as 12. They had five players in double figure scoring that night. Rosenquist to the right baseline. Riley with a drive, but threw this one over the rim, and then Kate Busick with the Jamestown rebound. To Cortis, front court left wing, back to Kate Busick, into the left corner for Jalen Martinson. Off for Hannah Hoggle in the lane. Hannah trying to drive on Yost. Kick out for a right wing three by Kate Cordes that's off the back rim. Long rebound to Morgan Edelman in DWU. Two on three. Edelman drives anyway. Spins on Busick and Hoggle and draws a foul. Edelman didn't care that she didn't have the number advantage. She drew the foul on Kate Busick. That's 14 fouls already on Jamestown in the first on Kate. Malia Estes has come in for... Dakota Wesleyan, she's a 5'7 sophomore from Lower Brule, South Dakota. 2.7 points, 1.7 rebounds a game. Sarah Lenz comes in for Jamestown, the 5'7 junior from Belle Plaine, Minnesota. 3.7 points, 2.2 rebounds, and Samantha Paulson. 4.8 points now for Samantha, the 5'11 freshman from Zimmerman, Minnesota. Two rebounds a game, but in the second half of this season, her play off the bench has just been sterling. First of two free throws, good for Morgan Edelman, a 76% foul shooter, and brings Dakota Wesleyan within one. Jamestown leads 8-7 at 5.52 in the first. This is to tie it, and Edelman did. Second time the game's been tied, it's 8-all. Kaya Tower in the right wing for Samantha Paulson. For Kate Cordes back on the left side, Hoggle sets a ball screen. Edelman works through it. It's to Sarah Lenz for a right angle. Three off the front rim. Rebound by Malia Estes for Dakota Wesley. And the Tigers look for their first lead. It's 8-8, five and a half minutes in the first quarter. On the baseline, this is Yost with a drive. Middle of the lane, good over Hoggle. And DWU does take the lead for the first time at 10-8. Portis in the lane from 16, trying to answer. Missing, but Kaya Tower in the left corner runs down the rebound. Right wing Paulson near the right corner. Kate Cordes on Estes. Backs out now. Right corner again for Paulson. Eight on the shot clock for Jamestown. Bounce low for Hoggle. Hannah's able to catch it. Went to a knee. That's a double dribble. Yeah, she dribbled, stopped, went to a knee, and that's a violation, and it's DWU ball. As they bring Talia Hayes, Maya Wilson, and Shalane Nagel all back in. Nearly 300 wins for their accomplished head coach, Jason Christensen, and a national championship to his credit. Six years ago in D2 women's basketball when there were still divisions in the NAIA. Hayes with a straightaway three. Barely uh, missed the hit the glass. Rebound no good by Nagel. Rebound Lenz in Jamestown. Down floor to Paulson. Back out front to Kate Cordes. 435 in the first. Tower. Screen by Hoggle. Tower tries to the left block and scores, and Kaya's off to a big start with eight. Tied again at 10, 423 in the first quarter. Malia Estes, left wing on the angle for Dakota Wesleyan. Screen set by Yost. Back to Yost. Emma wants a three. It's off the rim. Rebound taken away by Nagel. Low pass, return to Nagel. Missed a jumper in the right baseline. Maya Wilson, the offensive board, finds Estes for a left wing jumper that's no good. Hoggle couldn't hang on to the rebound, and it went out of bounds off of a Jimmy. It went off of Hoggle. It'll stay with Dakota Wesleyan. And Pat Sankey is lobbying for something, possibly a foul. 
Lacey Spockle has entered the game. She's a Nebraskan from Crofton, 5'11 junior, 5.2 points per game, 1.7 rebounds. 10-10, Dakota Wesleyan. And Jamestown tied 3.50 in the first quarter with Dakota Wesleyan ball. Malia Estes for Shelley Nagel. Nine on the shot clock as Maya Wilson tries to turn a baseline drive, cut off by Cordes. Cross court pass, knocked down, lends a hand on it. Kaya Tower then took it away. Two on two, bounce to Paulson, but Samantha lost the ball. Shalane Nagel stole it away. To Talia Hayes for Dakota Wesleyan. Drives for a layup. That's good. First two for Talia, and it's DWU back on top, 12 10, with 3.22 in the first quarter. Kaya Tower up top, works on Wilson. Left wing, it's Kate Cordes, left of the old circle. To the right baseline with a drive, and she's fouled. There's the first foul on DWU. It took nearly seven minutes. And it, it is on Shelly Nagel. That's her first. Megan Oswald enters for Jamestown. The 5'9 junior from Brownsdale, Minnesota. 2.7 points, two and a half rebounds a game. Morgan Edelman's back in for Dakota Wesleyan. So it's Riley Lowe's and Quist drive in the lane. It falls off. Calgo's able to regain it, but off glass and no good. And Lacey Sprockle with a rebound for DWU. Down Florida Hayes. They're up two at 12 to 10. DWU pass for a cutting Rosenquist. Back to Campbell, who missed the jumper. And the rebound to Jamestown and Kate Cordes. Just 4 12 shooting for Dakota Wesley and 33%, although they're ahead. Jamestown 4 of 10. Rob on the right block for Oswald. Knocked over. And foul, pushed out of bounds by Riley Rosenquist, her first, the second Dakota Wesleyan team foul. Here comes Audrey Ronikowski back in with two fouls for Jamestown. Maya Wilson back into the game for Dakota Wesleyan. So Audrey's got to play with care here. She takes the inbounds pass in the right corner to Kate Cordes. Left wing for Kaya Tower. For Megan Oswald in the left corner. Bounce to Rodakowski. Turn around. Seven from the left lane line. No good. Rebound Anna Campbell for DWU, who leads two. 220 in the first quarter. 12 10 Dakota Wesleyan. It is Edelman passing it in the lane for Campbell. Back up top for Sprockle, who wants a long jumper that's missing. Trying to tap the rebound is Paulson. And couldn't handle it when it's out of bounds. Off of Dakota Wesleyan, however, and it'll be Jimmy basketball. Rebounding so far, Dakota Wesleyan with that advantage, 11-7. Four turnovers on Jamestown, three on DWU. Jamestown down two and with the ball. Two minutes left in the first quarter, 12-10, Dakota Wesleyan. Tower in the left wing for Cordes. Once a three in the lead, but it's off the front rim. And a Campbell, the rebound for Dakota Wesleyan. To Riley Rosenquist. Right wing on the angle, and now out to Anna Campbell, who threw the ball away, wanting to find Edelman, but Morgan was being defended well by Samantha Paulson, didn't cut back. Emma Yost returns for Dakota Wesleyan for Lacey Sprockle. And with Kate Cordes out, Kate Busick's back in the Jamestown lineup. 142 first quarter, Dakota Wesleyan 12, Jamestown 10. Jimmy's with the ball on their home floor. Samantha Paulson, high post right side. Pass nearly dropped by Tower. Kaya regained it. Back to Samantha Paulson. Middle of the right wing for Kate Busick. Baseline drive. Cross court pass knocked out of bounds by Anna Campbell of VWU. 13 on the Jamestown shot clock and 125 left in the first quarter. It's in on the left corner for a three by Busick. Kate is good to give Jamestown the lead. 33rd made three of the year. It's 13-12 Jamestown. Baseline on the other end. A drive by Emma Yo scores to put DWU back in front. 14-13. It's Emma's second bucket. 105 first quarter. Music for Megan Oswald. Middle of the right wing. Paulson. Sam with a three, but it's off the back rim. And Meyer Wilson the rebound. Down Florida Riley. Rosenquist. Tower with defense. Made her lose the ball. But it went off of uh, Paulson and out of bounds. Nearly a steal there by Kaya. Dakota Wesleyan brings Talia Hayes back in. Jason Christensen substituting fairly freely, but again, he doesn't have either Isabel Enan or Grace Frieda. And uh, 
Stepping on the sideline was Talia Hayes after she took the inbounds pass. It's out of bounds. It's Jamestown ball. 51.2 left first quarter. 14-13 Dakota Wesleyan. Tight game at the start. Dakota Wesleyan trying to assure themselves of playing at home in the first round on Wednesday night. They would if they win. Here's a three straight away. Tower. A little long goes. You went for a third of the quarter. Edelman the rebound. Dakota Wesleyan with 30 seconds left in the first quarter. And into the front court. Four and a half more seconds on the game clock than on the shot clock. The game clock says 20. Edelman still with a dribble. Hands it to Talia Hayes. The shot clock now says 11. Campbell, eight on the shot clock for Hayes for a lob down low for Yost. Defended well, knocked out of bounds by Jamestown. Rodakowski was down there. As we say, she's got to be careful with her two fouls. Eight and a half seconds on the game clock. Four on the shot clock as Dakota Wesleyan will inbound. Left baseline of the offensive bucket to our left with Edelman. Morgan looking for someone open. Stolen, Samantha Paulson with seven seconds. Down floor to Tower across the timeline. Three, two, one. Tower in the lane. Left hand runner good with a banker at the buzzer. Kaya Tower ends a 10 point first quarter and puts Jamestown back in the lead. Kaya with a great start in her final regular season home game. And at the end of one at Harold Newman Arena, it's Jamestown 15, Dakota Wesleyan 14 on Jamestown 107.1. This is the voice of the Jimmys. The Frontier Fork invites you in for a true Dakota territory dining experience. This unique location looks like an authentic 1800s fort. Head upstairs and you'll be greeted with the mouth-watering aroma of freshly grilled ribeyes and barbecued ribs. They're open from 4 to 9 Monday through Saturday, and their legendary prime rib is served on Fridays and Saturdays. Now hiring a full-time or part-time cook, Call 252-7492. The Frontier Fort, on the road to the Buffalo, Jamestown. Kaya Towers first quarter, pretty strong. Four of six shooting, two of three on threes with a rebound and a game high 10. And her bucket just before the first quarter buzzer put Jamestown back in front by a score of 15 to 14 over Dakota Wesleyan. constituting the fourth lead change of the opening quarter. Dakota Wesleyan has the ball to start the second quarter. Let's set their five. Maya Wilson, Riley Rosenquist, Shalane Nagel, Morgan Edelman, and Emma Yost. They're down one to Jamestown, 15-14. Good start to this game, the final one of the regular season for both teams. Edelman, pass on the left wing for Maya Wilson. High post, Yost, she's not afraid to shoot from the outside. She hits an 18-footer. That's six for Emma, and the lead back with DWU at 16 to 15. First Jamestown possession of the second quarter. Handoff from Oswald to Samantha Paulson. Fell down and uh, traveled. So DWU has it back. The fifth turnover on Jamestown. Dakota Wesley in six turnovers. Morgan Edelman, right wing to Rosenquist down low for a layup that spun off the rim by Edelman. Tough break for her, rebound Audrey Rodakowski in Jamestown. Olsen out front to Kate Busick, left wing Kate Cordes. Tower for the moment on the bench, lob to Rodakowski, 16 feet from the bucket, shoots over Yost and hits. Second bucket for Audrey. Jamestown leads again, 17-16. Riley Rosenquist is called for a double dribble. The sophomore has the seventh DWU turnover. Kaya Tower back in now for Samantha Paulson for Jamestown. Megan Oswald with Kate Busick, Kaya Tower, Audrey Rudokowski, and Kate Cordes. They're the five Jimmies on the floor. They're up one, 17-16, 8.42 in the first half. Tower with a lob in the lane for Rodakowski. The senior, Audrey, working again on Yost. Spins once, spins twice. Takes a little bump, lays in off the glass and missing. Rebound, Emma Yost. Good defense there by Yost. Made a tough angle on Audrey. Wilson out front to Yost. Straight away three for Emma. Rim the basket. Wilson tried to tap the rebound. 
to a teammate, but it's out of bounds instead, and it's Jamestown Bulls. Talia Hayes re-enters for Dakota Wesleyan. To Jason Christensen's bench is Riley Rosenquist. 17-16 Jamestown, tight game, 8-19 first half at Harold Newman Arena. Men's action, of course, still ahead for you here on Jamestown 107.1. And tomorrow, Twins baseball, and uh, Kate Busick threw it away behind Tower. And Tower was well defended by Maya Wilson. I think screened from seeing that pass. But the Jamestown turnover gives it back to Dakota Wesley. And about two minutes into the second quarter, Maya Wilson with a right-hand dribble between the rings. On the right side now for Shalane Nagel at a high post. To Leah Hayes, left side for Maya Wilson. Maya for Emma Yost in the lane. Turns on Rodakowski. Oh, Audrey has to be careful. But she forces a walk this time. Rodakowski with a couple of early fouls, but she's been back on the floor since the latter part of the first quarter. James Howe with it back and holding on to the one-point lead at 17-16. Kate Cordes in the right corner, trying to ward off Hayes. Now to Rodakowski, turn around from 10, right of the lane, just off the rim, rebound Shalane Nagel. And DWU. Speeding down the middle of the lane is Edelman. Now to high post, Shalane Nagel. Left wing for Edelman. Nagel sets her a screen, tries a straightaway three. Off the front rim. Kate Busick the rebound. Only one of 60 WUs on uh, threes today so far. Jamestown's three of nine. Kate Cornish, left wing, Kaya Tower. Kaya's hit a couple. Busick has the other for the Jimmies. Left wing, Cordes wants one here, left side. Off the front rim, though. Long rebound run down by Morgan Edelman for DWU. Just under seven minutes left in the first half. DWU down a point to Jamestown and with a ball. Yost, Edelman on the left wing now after taking that pass. Handed back to Talia Hayes. Left wing angle, three, good. Talia Hayes with number 31 for the, the year for her. She has five. And DWU regains the lead at 19-17. 6.34 in the first half. Neither team's led by more than three today. Rodakowski on the right wing for Kate Cordes. A three to get Jamestown the lead, but short off the right rim and rebounded by Morgan Edelman for DWU. To Wilson, cross court to Hayes, open. Here comes a three, good. Hayes with two threes in succession to extend the lead to five for DWU. Dakota Wesleyan with the longest lead for either team today and a timeout with 6.14 left in the first half by Jamestown. It's Dakota Wesleyan 22, Jamestown 17. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. How are you doing? Really, how are you doing? Are you taking the time to check in on you? A real check-in. Scheduling a wellness visit is an easy way to take care of yourself. At Essentia Health, we want to know how you're doing. We want to help. Whether it's face-to-face -face or a virtual appointment, the right care is waiting for you. We'll listen, assess how you are, and get you back on track. It's always good to check in. Care like nowhere else. Essentia Health. Schedule online at EssentiaHealth.org. Two quick fire threes by Talia Hayes for Dakota Wesleyan. And that has the Tigers on top by five. Longest lead for either team so far today. 22 17, 6 in the first half. Jamestown basketball. Tower left wing for Kate Cordes. Kate looking for a Hannah Hoggle screen. She's just returned to the game. Left wing Busick wants a three off the back rim. Martinson reached over for the rebound, knocked it out of bounds. And maybe fortunate she didn't get called for a foul there. But it'll be Dakota Wesleyan ball with 5.54 left in the first half here at Harold Newman Arena. Men's action still ahead, so come on over if you have anything else to do today for one more session for regular season basketball. Wilson up top for Talia Hayes. Left wing, a block, Kate Busick. Knocked it out of bounds. It'll stay with DWU. Hayes tried one from 18 feet left wing on the angle, and Busick... Came up with a block. Anna Campbell was re-entered. Triggers the inbound left baseline. Down low on the baseline. Hayes double teamed. And Martinson helped deter that shot. Kate Busick took it down for Jamestown. Left wing to Kaya Tower in the front court. Jimmy's down five with five and a half minutes in the half. Tower, a left wing three. Banked it in. 
third three for Kaya, 13 points for the 50 year senior and it's 22 to 20 for DWU with the ball back. Lacey Sprockles back in the game, turn around and Lacey scores on the baseline. 24 to 20 for Dakota Wesleyan, 5.05 in the half. Busick for Jalen Martinson, right wing on the angle. Into the right corner for Cordes. She's guarded by Anna Campbell. Backs up, takes a three and hits it. Kate's first three of the day. The fifth made three for Jamestown. And the Jimmies are back to within a point. Dakota Wesleyan leads 24, 23, or 45 to go in the first half. Anna Campbell all over her as Martinson and poked her in the eye. Ouch. Or the nose. Anyway, she's hurting. And it's a foul on Martinson, and that's two on Jalen. So... Both she and Audrey Rodakowski with a couple of fouls. They're going to have to look here at Anna Campbell. I mean, she, I mean, really got poked. And she's hurting. And is walking, but tears have welled up and certainly understandable after the shot she took. It's the first foul on either team in this second quarter. Jason Christensen having to make a substitution here. And it's Shalane Nagel who re-enters. 440, first half. Dakota Wesleyan 24, Jamestown 23 in this final day of the GPAC regular season. Of course, we'll update scores as we have the opportunity and certainly at halftime. DWU again knows they'll be at home Wednesday if they win today's game. Left wing, here's Malia Estes who hits a two, standing on the arc, but she hit it for her first two. 26-23 for Dakota Wesleyan. 4.20 to go in the first half. For Jamestown, Kate Cordes, who nearly walked. Left lane line in the lane, now lobs it out for Kate Busick, and the offense is reset, still with 16 on the shot clock. Left wing, it's Cordes again. Kate back out front to Kate Busick now to Kaya Tower with eight on the timer. Stops in the lane, finds Hoggle for a baseline jumper that rolls in for Hannah. Good look there by Tower, and Hoggle has her first two. 26-25 for Dakota Wesleyan with 3.50 to go in the half. Wilson for Sprockle. Now finds Morgan Edelman up top for Dakota Wesleyan. Screen by Nagel. Pass on the left wing for Sprockle. Jumper from 18 is short. Running that rebound down. Hoggle nearly had it. Nope, showing Nagel. Does instead. Dakota Wesleyan keeps it. Cross court for Edelman. To the baseline. Go open path for him. Missed the layup. Trying to grab the rebound. And doing so is Edelman. Gained her own miss and drew a foul. That's Hannah Hoggle with her first. And the second Jamestown team foul. Audrey Rodakowski's back in. Samantha Paulson returns. Martinson to the bench. Jalen has a couple of fouls. Morgan Edelman hit a couple of free throws in the first quarter. Has two here. First is good for her fifth point. And Dakota Wesleyan's lead is now 27-25. 3.26 in the first half. Edelman will shoot another on the way and on the board. 28-25. DWU over Jamestown. 3.23 in the first half at Harold Newman Arena. Kate Busick for Audrey Rodakowski on a high post between the rings. Comes right wing on the angle near the corner to Tower. Now to Rodakowski, right lane line on Yost. Starts to drive on her. Yost is playing her tough defensively. Little fadeaway rolls in for Audrey. Just shot it over Yost again. She's had two buckets just like that. 28-27 Dakota Wesleyan with three minutes to go in the half. Lob inside. Paulson with a steal. Sam took it away on the entry pass. Handed it to Rodakowski to Busick. Hand off for Samantha Paulson. Drive, oh, and starting that drive, she's fouled by Morgan Edelman, who thought she was going to drive to the hole, and she probably would have. Instead, that's her first foul. And the first on Dakota Wesley in the second quarter, Edelman's out. Talia Hayes returns. Riley Wozenquist also back in for DWU for Malia Estes. Rodakowski will inbound. Jamestown looks to regain the lead with 2.49 left in the first half. 28-27 Dakota Wesleyan. It's into Kate Busick. She's up top. Left wing on the angle now to Samantha Paulson on the right side to Cordes in the right corner to Kaya Tower. To Rodakowski on the right block. There's Yost guarding her again. Cross-court pass nearly knocked away. Paulson comes up with it though. 
Now Debusik out front, three in the timer, two. Tower nearly dropped it, drives to the baseline, and fouled. Tower started that run with two on the shot clock and sped toward the bucket and drew the foul on Maya Wilson, her first and the second team foul in DWU, but Tower will have the first free throws of the game for Jamestown, who's tied for sixth in the country in foul shooting at 78%, tied for first in the league. Tower has the first, and Kaya is now up to 14 points, and she's tied the game here at 28 apiece. This is to give Jamestown the lead back. Good. 15 for Tower, the eighth lead change. 29, 28 Jamestown, 224 remains in the first half here at Harold Newman Arena. Maya Wilson, right hand dribble. Talia Hayes, right wing on the angle. Kate Cordes with two hands, in, or Kate Busick it is with two hands in her face. Entry pass to Rosenquist, hit the floor and lost the ball out of bounds. Finally frustrated, thought she'd drawn a foul, but nope, she just fell and dropped the ball and lost it, and Jamestown has it back with a one-point lead and 2.05 left in the half. 29-28 over Dakota Wesleyan. Busick with a handoff to Kate Cordes, left wing. Ball screen, Rodakowski, but Yost trying to work her way around it. Now the guard by Rosenquist. Cordes lost her dribble, but she's able to find Rodakowski. Audrey in the lane now, right lane line. Yost on her, fade away, threw it over the rim. Yost with good D again. Rebound Maya Wilson, and long down floor to Nagel, but Shalane walked. She was wide open in the left block, but took a couple of steps as she received the pass. And Dakota Wesleyan turns it over. It's nine on them. Jamestown up one, 29-28, 135 and a half. Left wing a three, or two it is. It's on the arc, but it's good for Kate Cordes for her second bucket. 31-28, Jamestown. That's just the largest Jimmy lead, 122 in the first half. Riley Rosenquist in the left corner. For Emma Yost for a jumper. Boy, what a player this is from in the inside and the outside. Hit from 18, she has eight. 31-30 to 30 for Jamestown at 108 and a half. Kaya Tower into the lane, stops on the lane line left side to Kate Cordes, handed her face by Talia Hayes with one minute to go in the half, lob to Audrey Rodakowski, right elbow in the lane. Bounce for Busick, drives off the rim. Riley Rosenquist forced her wide, then a foul in the backcourt on Jamestown on Kaya Tower. That's her first and the third Jimmy team foul with 53.3 left in the first half. 31 to 30 Jamestown, but Dakota Wesleyan looks to regain the lead. We've already had eight lead changes in this game. Rosenquist for Hayes, right with the angle. Maya Wilson in front of the Jamestown bench. Busick guards her. High post Yost between the rings. Now it is Hayes again. Comes to the top of the arc, hands it to Nagel. Nine on the shot clock. Nagel with a runner in the lane. Good. Nagel's second bucket, she has five. The lead again for DWU at 32-31. 23 seconds in the half, and with the shot clock off, James Cowan can run this down to the end of the half. Tower, not too far across the timeline, switches hands to a right-hand dribble now. The clock winks down to 11 and 10. Now Tower will start with seven on the clock. Rosenquist, or it's Rodakowski with a screen and then driving to the block and scoring is Tower. And Dakota Wesleyan, a long desperation shot at the end of the half fails, but Jamestown gains the lead back on Kaya Tower's late bucket as she ended a big first half with 17 points in her final regular season home game. And it is anyone's game at the half at Harold Newman Arena. Jamestown Jimmy's lead to the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers, 33-32. Look at the numbers at the half. Coming up, and we'll tell you about those other GPAC women's scores, too. Next here on Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. Hey, it's Sean with the Jamestown Country Club. Remember to get your membership for the upcoming season at our 18-hole championship course that hosts the FCCU Labor Day Classic and we're the home course for the Blue Jays and Jimmies men's and ladies golf teams. The Jamestown Country Club hosts an excellent bar and restaurant that is open to the public and has the only outdoor pool in the area. Contact the Jamestown Country Club today for your membership. And congratulations to the Minnesota Twins' Joe Maurer on his election into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Looking for one of the best on the planet? 
then check out Honda Four Tracks Foreman. There are three models to choose from, and they all offer strong swing arm rear suspension that is perfect for hard work or towing. They all feature strong front and rear racks, plus a handy utility box for storage. So head to Gunner Real Sports in First Street, West Downtown Jamestown, and check out the new Honda Foreman. For riders 16 and older, Honda recommends all ATV riders take training course and read the owner's manual thoroughly. Need some custom screen printed t-shirts? Lots of t-shirts? You need originals. originals! Or do you just need one shirt with your corporate logo for the new guy? Originals! Caps, jackets, U sizes, adult sizes, Blue Jay apparel, Jimmy apparel, you need originals. There you have it, folks. For custom printed apparel, embroidery, and work apparel, it's originals. They can also do online stores for your sports team or business. 216 First Avenue, downtown Jamestown. Open 9 to 5 weekdays. Visit originals.com. What would life be like without telephones, internet, and digital cable? Let's not even go there. Dakota Central is proud to be the local company that provides you with these high-tech options. Whether it's the crystal clear telephone connection, the digital cable that produces over 150 channels, HD and DVR, or reliable high-speed internet. Dakota Central provides it all, serving Jamestown and Carrington and beyond. Call 952-1000, 652-3184, or see them on the web at dakotacentral.com. Halftime at Harold Newman Arena. Good first half of basketball, 33-32 Jamestown leading Dakota Wesleyan. And more about this game and the other action in GPAC women's basketball coming right up. But we visit with men's interim head coach Greg Uland, whose team is on a pretty good roll right now. A fourth straight win happened over Briarcliff on uh, Wednesday night. And uh, Greg, it's just these last couple of weeks, it's really, really come together at both ends of the floor for your team yeah defensively like we talked after that tough stretch we had it's like we just got to get a little bit better every day and I thought the kids you know I thought they took some big steps forward and it, it, it was good the other night to see us kind of get out because they're they're not very um, easy team to defend like we like we talked uh, you know when you go with the guards you got five guys out there that can shoot the three and same thing we're going to see today so it's it's kind of testing our will a little bit to see, oh, can we get out in the perimeter? Can the bigs get out there and defend? And and then also, can we have people in to help spots on penetration and so forth? So it was it was positive from the other night on the defensive end. And the offensive end, um, same thing. I mean, there's some kids that are contributing some nice minutes for us and coming in and putting in some, uh, making some buckets for us. And that's something that I'm still kind of waiting for us just to kind of explode on one of these games. and play a full 40 minutes of really good offense because that would be really scary and actually a lot of fun to watch but uh, we had a little stretch again where we're still taking good shots it's just we can't let ourselves get into those four or five minute stretches of not scoring because yeah. it takes so much momentum away from what we're trying to do and like everybody in the country in America knows that when you when you make a couple buckets it's a lot easier to play defense yeah. so that would help us on that end a little bit more too. That's true but you know that about any time and you've known this all year, you have five serious offensive threats on the floor just about all the time, and you, you've known that since you took over. Yeah, and now we're just trying to get them to read the floor a little bit better, understand roles, understand what the defense is trying to do against us, and then take advantage, because there's a lot of situations that we have an advantage, and we just have to be able to read it and take care of it and do it. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, well, proof was the other day. I mean, we had five guys, five capable guys, and there's two guys that were very close to getting double digits too. So when you have seven kids that are all capable of putting up some big numbers, it's it's a uh, it, it's a good it's a good thing to have. What about this matchup you have today? This is uh, this is a team you, you said they're they're pretty much guard oriented. Of course, it's been so long since you played them. It may be. Maybe hard to remember. It's been almost three months, which is kind of a mind-bending thing since you played them in the Corn Palace. But uh, how do you think you match up with this team? Well, I watched about ten minutes of that film, and I had to turn it off because <laughs> it's like a completely different team. And yeah. It kind of. Uh, I'm. I like to think of myself as kind of like. A, I enjoy defense. That's a big thing. I enjoy teaching it and being having that be a staple. And so that's why there's times when I'm struggling with it but then we go back and watch that game and oof -da, that was <laughs> that was bad they took advantage of us in so many different areas but it was it was a long time ago but they still are very capable I mean they got 
they put out five kids. I mean, they have, what, seven kids that can all shoot the three? Oh, yeah. And, and that's hard. When they stretch your defense like that, spread you apart, and then, you know, kind of penetrate that area, it's it's really – it's tough to guard. So um, – and, and they got guys that – two or three different guys have put up 30, 35 in one night. So, you know, they have the potential also when you talk about how scary we are offensively. They do too. And they have yeah. – a you know, I was just talking to Coach Wilbur a little bit, and he's like, we just – we just don't sh- – we're not – we have really good shooters. We just haven't – had a game where we've made a lot of shots. I was like, well, welcome to the Harold Newman Arena. <laughs> yeah, you'll, no you'll probably make them all today. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you'll spearhead that off into a nice little run. But um, very scary team. And we just got to make uh, Here's the thing. If we, can, if we can contest their shots and they make them, we'll tip our hat to them. But as long as we're contesting all the shots, you know, eventually that wears on you as a shooter. Sure. We just can't give them wide open looks. And that's the biggest thing today is making sure that we get hands up on everybody. Well, you've got a lot of seniors, and uh, I know there's a lot on their mind today, but uh, that can be positive motivation for them, too. Yeah, yeah emotionally, uh, somebody had asked me earlier today how the guys are going to be, and I was like, I said, I have no idea, to be honest with you. And, you know, anybody can say what they want and tell you what you want to hear as a coach and all that, but until you kind of go through it and kind of hits you when you're standing out there, five seniors, uh, knowing that this could possibly be your last home game, it's... When it hits you, you just don't know. Oh, yeah. And then there's, you know, you play on the emotion. Well, you know, that only lasts so long, the emotion of understanding this is the last game and and so forth. So who knows? Hopefully it's a positive for us, but I just don't know. I just, I hope they understand that, you know, this is a great opportunity for them to play in front of their family and their parents. And some of them, this is only probably second or third game that they've got to see their yeah. child in person. So. Hopefully they take full advantage and play to their capabilities and play to their abilities. Well, before I let you go, I have to mention you were there to see it yesterday. What oh, about yeah. the job the Blue Jay girls did? Uh, your daughter Mia came in coming up with a huge game with 20 as they win in the play-in game. And Because I know those two losses to Williston frustrated so much. And brother, did they put it together in the second half yesterday? Yeah, they did. It was a, I was trying to think of the words to put into it last night because I was, you know, obviously you're proud of your daughter when she plays at that level and it's just it, there's it was a team thing though that was I mean Hannah hit a shot I mean yep. you've seen that team Hannah when Hannah hits a three yes. everybody's excited mm-hmm. and Haley hit some shots and um, perseverance that was the big thing you know because they bounced back they didn't shoot well the two times they lost to Williston and yeah. to see them come back and you know a lot of that gets kind of um, unseen but Leah Trumbauer has been a tremendous leader yes. to those guys because they she's the only one that had any type of varsity experience i mean she's out there with freshmen and sophomores mm-hmm. for god's sakes who've never yeah. played in a big game before and, and and you know there's there's times when she does so many little things that go unnoticed from from just the regular fans yeah but from a coaching standpoint it's like wow you know there's rebounds here she's on top of that zone flying around getting tips and doing all the little things that you know sometimes she doesn't get doesn't score as much because she does have a few gunners on the team that like to hoist it up there but mm-hmm. Uh, she does a lot of great things, and that leadership. Me and I talked about it last night when she got home at 1:30. I'm like, she's she was a, she's the glue girl, and yeah. she's the one that kind of really has showed you guys how how to play at this level. And uh, but no, overall team effort was really fun. I'm glad they get to play again because you know for them to be able to go to the WDA tournament and just kind of get that experience. And heck, you never know. Hey, you shoot well. Yeah. I mean, it's like tonight, today. Yep. I mean, if prior, if Dakota Wesleyan shoots it really well, or if we shoot it really well, you know. Like I said, that's that's a sign of a good coach when you shoot well, when, when your team shoots there well. There you right? go, right, exactly. Yeah. The coaches, the coaches who have their team shoot well don't lose much, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Greg, uh, thank you again. Yeah. Best of luck this afternoon. We'll visit after the game. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Greg, sir. you and the uh, Jimmy Men's interim head coaches, his team will take on Dakota Wesleyan a little bit later today. But good women's action first. Anybody's game as the second half nears 33-32. Jamestown leading Dakota Wesley, and we look at, we'll look at those first half numbers and the other GPAC scores and bring you the second half next from Harold Newman Arena. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. Sign-on bonuses, $10,000 for full-time RNs or LPNs working PM or NOC shifts, and $10,000 for full-time NOC weekend package positions, and $5,000 for part-time PM shifts. Also offering $5,000 for full-time CNAs working PM shifts or weekend package day PM or NOC shifts. Dietary positions available also. Apply at smphealth.org slash Ave Maria. love sports so do we 
You know, the thrill of victory and the agony of injury. Hey, injuries happen. Thankfully, JRMC Orthopedics is ready to act fast. Jamestown athletes and their fans can choose the home team for their care. Call 952-4048 for quick injury attention. Home team sports medicine. It's right here at JRMC. Second half just ahead in a good game here at Dakota Wesleyan in women's basketball. Jamestown leading Dakota Wesleyan 33-32. David Burrow back with you. Glad you're with us. Jamestown shot 41% in the first half, 13 of 32, 5 of 14 threes, 2 of 2 free throws. 39% for Dakota Wesleyan, who shot 43% for the season coming in. 12 of 31, 3 of 9 on threes, 5 of 6 at the foul line. Rebounding advantage, big one to Dakota Wesleyan, 25-13. Yet the Jimmys still lead behind Kaya Towers' enormous first half. The bucket right before the end of the half. Has her at 17 points, six of eight shooting, three of four on threes, two of two at the line, a rebound, an assist, and a steal. Six for Andre Rodakowski. Kate Cornish with five, just two of seven shooting for Kate today. Kate Busick with a three pointer and three points, and Hannah Hoggle with two. Emma Yost and Talia Hayes, each with eight points to lead Dakota Wesleyan in that first half of play. There were six points for Morgan Edelman, but just one of four shooting for Morgan. Five points for Shalane Nagel. The post player hit a three. Two points each for Malia Estes and Lacey Sprocko. One for Anna Campbell. Jamestown, six turnovers. Dakota Wesley in 10, and Jamestown the advantage in points off turnovers 10, 12 to 2. Each team with 10 points in the paint. Go to Wesley with the only two second chance points. DWU's bench five, Jamestown's two. Ten lead changes in the first half. Four ties. Dakota Wesleyan's largest lead, five. Jamestown's largest lead, three. Their lead is one. Jamestown's at the half, 33-32. Now, what else is going on in the GPAC in women's basketball in this final day of the regular season? Well, Briarcliff knows they'd wrap up the third seed if they win and they're leading Morningside 35 to 30 just underway in the third in Sioux City that's on Briarcliff's home floor what about this Northwestern is leading Dort by 15 at the half how do you do 43 to 28 a stunner potentially there Doan the Tigers, if they can defeat Hastings, they wrap up the eighth and final seed, and they're leading Hastings at the half in Crete, 37-27. And Concordia, who's already clinched the second seed, is leading Midland at the half in Seward, 41-29. And Mount Marty leading College of St. Mary in Omaha at the half, 44-34. But uh, let's keep our eye on that Dort score. That is an absolute stunner at halftime as Northwestern's Red Raiders, who... Uh, come into this day a game behind both Briarcliff and Dakota Wesleyan sharing third Northwestern and fifth if Northwestern hangs on then the Jimmies know they would be the sixth seed unless Morningside comes back to beat Briarcliff Jamestown wins a tie break with Morningside hmm well, you never know. They're not robots, as I like to say. Second half just ahead here. Jamestown up 33-32 in Dakota Wesleyan. They fell by 10 to the Tigers at the Corn Palace in Mitchell in November. It was November 29th. Just six days after Thanksgiving that these teams first played. Again, we'll have coverage Wednesday here on Jamestown 107.1. And again, our hope is to bring you coverage also on Q101. Our hope is to bring you both of the Jimmy's GPAC quarterfinal games. Again, we know both teams are on the road. Jamestown could be either the fifth, sixth, or seventh seed, depending on what happens today. The Jimmy men will be either the fifth or sixth seed. Second half about to begin. The teams are back on the floor with their starting lineups. Talia Hayes, Morgan Edelman. Maya Wilson, Emma Yost, Shalane Nagel for Dakota Wesley and Kate Cordes, Kaya Tower, Kate Busick, Jalen Martinson, Audrey Rodakowski for Jamestown. Neither Martinson nor Rodakowski got to that third foul. 
in the first half. Jamestown with the ball, the bucket to our right. Uh, to your right, if you're watching on the YouTube page of Jimmy Athletics, it's to our left from our position. Kate Busick in the corner is knocked over by Morgan Edelman. Her second in the first team foul in DWU. Rodakowski inbounds to Tower off that big first half for Kaya. To Kate Busick, right wing on the angle. Long three. Kate Cordes is off the side rim left. Maya Wilson the rebound for Dakota Wesleyan as they look to regain the lead. Hayes up front on a high post. It's Emma Yosh. She plays outside a lot. She's a good defender, but boy, she can hit outside shots too as she's already proven today. So can Nagel who finds Yost in the lane. Left wing Edelman. She wants a three off the back rim. Kate Nagel, uh, Kate Busick the rebound for Jamestown. About a minute into the third quarter. Kaya Tower in the lane at the foul line. Left wing Cordes wants another three. Hey this one's good. Kate Cordes has her second three of the day. Now up to 75 for the year. The school record for a single season, 83. 36-32 Jamestown. Their longest lead today. Left corner, Maya Wilson, a three for DWU is off the left rim. And Audrey Rodakowski rebounds for the Jimmies. Her third rebound today for Kate Cordes. For Kaya Tower up top. Edelman out there to guard her. Pass to Rodakowski in the lane. Nagel trying to take it away. And Nagel Ends up reaching over and fouling her, and Audrey did a smart thing right there. Crouched down to protect the ball as Nagel was trying to reach over and drew that foul on Shalane Nagel. What a smart play. Nagel's second, the second team foul in Dakota Wesleyan. 8.26 in the third, 36-32 Jamestown. Tower into Rodakowski, back to Kaya Tower up top. Three, can she hit another? Yes, she can. Kaya Tower's fourth. She has 20. The Jamestown lead at 7, 39-32 with 8-12 left in the third. Morgan Edelman for Dakota Wesleyan. Up top to Shalane Nagel. Lob for Emma Yost on the left block. She's double teamed. Hands it out to Nagel for a three straight away. Bank nearly went in but didn't. Kate Busick the rebound. Jamestown. The Jimmies now up 7, 2-10 into the third quarter. Busick handed out for Tower. What a game she's having in her final regular season home game. Tower, four, Kate Cordes straight away, three. Missed, but a Dakota Wesleyan player was knocked down in the middle of the lane. By Audrey Rodakowski, her third. So the shot by Cordes wouldn't have counted even if it had fallen. But that's three on Rodakowski in the second team foul. On... Jamestown, or the first I should say, is Anna Campbell and Lacey Sprockle return for Dakota Wesleyan. And Rodakowski out after picking up that foul with Hannah Hoggle returning. Dakota Wesleyan down seven now to Jamestown. 39-32, seven and a half minutes left third quarter. Malia Estes is also returned. Lob for Morgan Edelman, right of the lane drive. Tower with good defense. The shot missed, rebound loose in the floor, ends up in a dual possession. Dakota Wesleyan has the arrow pointing their way with 18 on their shot clock. Mosenquispo inbound. Jimmy's turning up the defense here lately. They built the lead up to seven. It's a lob to Rosenquist in the lane. Another double team. Right wing Sparkle. Lacey wants a three. It's off the right rim and out of bounds. And DWU lately just hasn't been getting the looks they wanted. First six in the third quarter. In fact, it's an 8-0 run for Jamestown. For a seven-point lead at 39-32 over Dakota Wesleyan. 7-5 in the third. Jalen Martinson, left wing, tower. Passed Rosenquist, but then lost it out of bounds. Eight Jamestown turnover. Dakota Wesleyan has 10. 43% shooting for Jamestown. Dakota Wesleyan down to 33% from the floor. Malia Estes, right side of the lane, and being caught with a clear off as she passed the ball to Morgan Edelman. An illegal screen on Estes is her first foul in the third on DWU in this third quarter. 
And that's 11 turnovers on the Tigers. Jalen Martinson right wing on the angle. The tower up top, left wing now. Kaya cross court for Martinson. Jalen with a right baseline drive. Knocked away, regained it and laid it in. Nearly stolen, but Martinson kept with it and scored. Ten in a row for Jamestown. They're up nine. 41-32. 6-23 in the third. Lob to Lacey Sprockle in the lane against Hoggle who fouled her. Hannah's second and the second team foul on Jamestown. Sprockle, a versatile player, inside and outside shooter. Sarah Lenz in for Kate Cornish for James Thompson. Leah Hayes re-enters for Dakota Wesleyan. Here is Lacey Sprockle, who hits the free throw, and at the line now, this season, she's 12 of 13. 41-33, Jamestown, that breaks the 10-0 Jimmy run. Sprockle missed the second, and it's rebounded by Kate Busick, who's having a pretty decent rebounding day. Into the front court, right wing for Sarah Lenz. For Jalen Martinson up top. Left wing, it is Tower. Kaya, between the rings with a hand to Lenz. Tower, oh, almost got call. I thought she was going to have a moving screen, didn't. Eight on the shot clock. Busick tries to start a drive, right wing Lenz in front of the bench. Here's a three off the front rim. Martinson hustling for the rebound, but stepped on the baseline, it's out of bounds. Martinson couldn't quite keep it in play. Emma Yost returns. Shalane Nagel. Maya Wilson in for Dakota Wesleyan as they try to get their offense back going. They haven't had a field goal now in nearly five minutes. And their head coach, Jason Christensen, wants timeout. 5.45 left third quarter. It's Jamestown by eight over Dakota Wesleyan. 41-33. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. From baby bump and beyond, let me help you exercise safely during and after your pregnancy. I'm Brittany Ganarelli, the area's only pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist and doctor of physical therapy. Let me help you safely gain confidence in movement during and after your pregnancy. Come and see me at Apex Physical Therapy and Wellness Center. That's Apex Physical Therapy and Wellness Center in Jamestown, 701-952-2739. That's 952-2739. Your home for UJ Jimmy's, AM 1400 KQDJ Jamestown, and 107.1 K296HH Jamestown. The Colonel Wesleyan inbounds. The Tigers find themselves down eight. They were down nine, 41-33 to Jamestown. Oh, good lob pass from Yosta Nagel and Shalane Nagel with a lay-in. Good little flick pass from Emma Yost, and Nagel's up to seven. 41-35, Jamestown, five and a half minutes in the third. On the right baseline, Jalen Martinson drives to the hole, and will it count? Well, the foul is on Edelman. I think this bucket's going to count. Yes, it does. Ronikowski, or Martinson now with four. Nagel, not Edelman, but it is Nagel's third foul and the fourth-team foul. On Dakota Wesleyan, 43-35, Jamestown, Martinson with a free throw, good to complete the three-point play, and five all in this quarter today for Martinson. Jamestown by nine again at 44-35. As Anna Campbell, the senior, returns for DWU, out there with Morgan Edelman, Maya Wilson, Talia Hayes, and Emma Yost. Wilson on the left wing. Out front it is Hayes. DWU trying to avoid a second straight loss, and it's knocked out of bounds by Martinson. Again, even if they lose, DWU probably will still host, but there are scenarios where they could be the fifth seed and have to go on the road. Kate Cordes and uh, Megan Oswald re-enter for Jamestown. Ten on the shot clock for Dakota Wesley, and Hayes is out front to Morgan Edelman. A three, they need it, but it's short. Rebound tipped, loose. Kate Cordes trying to grab it, but tying it up. With her was Maya Wilson, dual possession, stays with Jamestown as they have the arrow with 4.59 left third quarter. Men's action still ahead. Thank you for joining us. Twins baseball here on Jamestown 107.1 tomorrow afternoon from spring training in Florida from Fort Myers with the Boston Red Sox at noon. Lens left wing to 
Kaya Tower in the lane, foul line jumper, Tower, oh, they're all falling today, aren't they? Most of them are anyway for Kaya, she's up to 22. Jamestown by 11. Dakota Wesleyan with a lob from Wilson to Yost as Emma was being knocked over by Hannah Hoggle for her third foul and the third team foul on Jamestown. Riley Rosenquist back in for Dakota Wesleyan for Maya Wilson. But it's 46-35 Jamestown. That field goal, the first bucket of the half for DWU. They've had only three in the first 523 of the quarter. Rosenquist in the right corner for Morgan Edelman. Back to Rosenquist, right of the lane. Fade away, jumper in the lane, good from eight feet. Rosenquist, her first two today after she had 16 in the game in November. 46-37 Jamestown, 4-18 in the third quarter. Tower straight away, three, this one missed. Rebound Rosenquist. Down floor she comes on a one-person break, now a baseline jumper, good by Edelman from 11 feet left side. Edelman's second bucket, she has eight. DWU cuts it to seven, Jamestown's up 46-39. Cornis a straightaway three with a tower screen is off the back rim and it's out of bounds to DWU. Rodakowski, Busick, Sam Paulson all return for Jamestown. 352 third quarter. Jamestown had 10 straight points to turn a one point deficit into a nine point lead. They led by as many as 11. So it ended up being a 15 to two run. Now DWU with the balls back within seven, 46-39 Jamestown. Edelman up top for Anna Campbell. On the weave to Leah Hayes, brings it back out front. Tower to guard her, screen set by Campbell. All the way to the baseline is Hayes and a runner on the right block is good. First two of the half for Hayes, she has 10. 46-41 for Jamestown, last six for DWU, 320 in the third. Busick with a bounce for Rodakowski on a high uh, post. Right wing, it's Tower, pass deflected, still came to Rodakowski on the right baseline. Nine on the shot clock, Rodakowski trying to move past Yost, un and under and under the bucket and drew a foul on Emma Yost. That's her first with all the work she's done defensively today, but that's five team fouls on Dakota Wesley and Audrey Rodakowski who had six in the first half goes to the line here for two. Audrey a 74% foul shooter. Jamie's haven't missed today, they're three of three. First here, good. 47-41 Jamestown, 306 in the third quarter. A lot still to be decided here. One more and Audrey missed it long. Emma Yost the rebound. Game still in the balance. Jamestown up six. Latter stages, third quarter, Anna Campbell passes it for Yost. Now right wing is Estes, baseline drive for a left block runner that misses. And Kate Busick has another rebound for Jamestown. Kate now has seven rebounds today, three points. Hand it off for Paulson, right wing Kaya Tower. Back to Paulson on the left side. Sam wants a three, and it's good. Sam Paulson's first three of the day. More huge points off the bench for the Zimmerman, Minnesota freshman. 50 to 41, Jamestown. Edelman into the lane for Anna Campbell. Drives and scoops it over Paulson and good. Campbell's first bucket, she has three. And a foul in the backcourt as Hayes is caught reaching in her first, but that's gonna give Jamestown Another opportunity at the line with 2.13 left in the third quarter as the Jimmies are in the bonus and it's Busick who will shoot them. Maya Wilson back in for Hayes. She might get a little coaching after that play. Kate Busick has been really good. Not there much, but 23 of 26, 89%. First one good. Her first point of the half. Back to an eight point Jamestown lead at 51-43. And the former Fargo Shanley Deacon, the junior, shoots again, hits again. 52-43 Jamestown, 2-12 in the third quarter. Maya Wilson crosses the timeline for Dakota Wesleyan. Big run to start the third is put the Jimmies for now in the advantage. And a Campbell angle on the right wing for DWU. Wilson cross court for Morgan Edelman. Drives on Tower. 
Passes to Campbell, left lane line. Nine on the shot clock. Campbell for a kick out for a three by Rosenquist. That's too strong, but Campbell reached the rebound. To Yost down low over Rodakowski, but left it short. Edelman tried to grab the board. Tower trying to steal it away. Kept by Edelman, but missed from three feet and rebounded by Rodakowski. Three chances for DWU, none fell. Cordis out front to Busick, 90 seconds in the third. Jamestown with the ball and a nine-point lead. Kaya Tower for Cordis on the right side. To Busick with 121 left third quarter. Hand off for Cordis for Paulson, way up top. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Cordis is run into by Edelman. Another Dakota Wesleyan foul. Edelman's third, and now Kate Cordis on the line for a couple. And she's an 86% foul shooter on 37 to 43 this season. Malia Estes returns to replace Edelman for Dakota Wesleyan. Jimmy's with a chance for a double digit lead. Again, Cordis first, good. Ninth point for Kate. 53-43 Jamestown over Dakota Wesleyan. 1-14 third quarter. Kate with a couple of more dribbles and hits again. 54-43, Jamestown matching their longest lead at 11. Estes on the right wing. Comes up top to Anna Campbell. Now to Yost in the lane. Dumped it down low for a layup by Rosenquist. Good play. Second bucket for Riley Rosenquist. 54-45, Jamestown. Now just under a minute to go in the third quarter. Hyatt-Tower for Kate Cordes. Right wing on the angle. Estes guards her up top for Sam Paulson. Handed to Kaya Tower. 16 on the shot clock. Tower with a drive into the lane, fouled. Dakota Wesleyan using some fouls in this third quarter. This one is on uh, Malia Estes. That's two on her. And Kaya Tower heads to the line where she's two for two today. And the Jimmies are now eight of nine. This top 10 foul shooting team in the country. Two more for Tower first, good. 23 points for the fifth year senior from Big Fork, Minnesota. 55 45 Jamestown. One more for Kaya. E short. Tan Yost with a rebound. Emma Yost, but it's Jamestown by 10. 40 seconds in the third quarter. Maya Wilson with Aqua sneakers across the timeline. Backs it out, sets the offense. Busick not guarding her closely, counts not on. 28 seconds in the third quarter. Wilson still with it. Now left wing pass to Malia Estes, a Campbell screen to the baseline is Estes. Turns around over Rodakowski, but a foul on Jamestown. Rodakowski was there. Is it on her? It is. That is her fourth. And team foul number four, and Hannah Hoggle is in. Big play there with Rodakowski's fourth foul with 19.4 left in the third quarter. A couple of free throws here for Estes. And she hit the first. Two out of four for the year. Three out of five as they're both good. 55-47 Jamestown. 19.4 in the third. Shot clock off. Busick into the front court. 15 seconds. Pass to Samantha Paulson. Now for Kaya Tower. 10. 9 with a screen set for Kaya. Cross court right wing. Paulson open three with five seconds. Is off the rim. Rebound is by Rosenquist, one second across the timeline. Rosenquist can't get a shot away. Jamestown takes an eight-point lead into the fourth quarter in this final regular season game. It's Jamestown 55, Dakota Wesley in 47. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. Johnny B's Brickhouse, famous for their pizza, but wait, there's pasta and their amazing wings and fresh ground hamburgers, tasty salads and appetizers too. And for dessert, you can't beat their sweet sticks. Come on out for Tuesday night trivia and live entertainment every Thursday night. The place to be is Johnny B's, smack dab in the middle of Main Street, downtown Jamestown. And remember, for delivery and carry out, call 952-8777. Jamestown with 6 of 11 from the floor in that third quarter. And Dakota Wesleyan, 6 of 16. 
Jamestown with a 55. 47 lead, a 20 point third quarter for the Jimmies. They have 23 from Kaya Tower. Ten by Kate Cordes, seven for Andre Rodakowski, who, remember, has four fouls. Ten for Chilea Hayes, leads Dakota Wesleyan. But still ten minutes to go. This is a pretty solid Dakota Wesleyan team, 14 and seven in the league. Jamestown, 12 and nine. Let's check on that Northwestern Dort score again while we have a brief second. It's still Northwestern by 14 over Dort. Wow, late in the third quarter, 62 to 48. Maya Wilson on the left wing for Morgan Edelman as Dakota Wesleyan has the ball to start the fourth quarter. Drive inside by Yost, missed it, gained her own rebound, and the putback's good. First two and a half for Yost, she now has 10, 55-49 Jamestown. Kate Cordes out front. Jimmy's once led by 11. Samantha Paulson uses a Hannah Hoggle screen and now hands it to Hannah, down low, but missed. Nagel made her change it, rebound Edelman. Dakota Wesleyan trying to put together a run here. They're back within six. Yost inside for Rosenquist for a layup. Down to a four point Jamestown lead at 55 51. 9 10 remaining. Tower up top for Samantha Paulson. Again for Tower on the left side. Wants another three off the back rim this time. Tipped by Busick. Hoggle knocked over, what do they call? Just out of bounds off Dakota Wesleyan. No foul. Jalen Martinson returns for Jamestown for Sam Paulson. Jamestown with 8.55 left, leading Dakota Wesleyan 55-51. Hannah Hoggle, right side inside the arc. To Busick, now the left wing to Cordes. Open for a three, left rim, missing, rebound. Shalane Nagel and Dakota Wesleyan. Morgan Edelman, middle of the right wing. For Nagel playing a high post, left wing for Wilson. Touch pass to Rosenquist. Baseline, now for Yost, now left baseline jumper, good. It's Nagel from 13 feet, she's up to nine. Jamestown's lead once 11 is now two, and head coach Thad Sankey wants time out. DWU's back into this game. 8-18 left at Harold Newman Arena. Now it's Jamestown 55, Dakota Wesleyan 53. On Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. Otter Tail Power Company would like to remind you about the importance of high school athletics in the lives of children. Those extracurricular activities play a role in the education and development of those kids involved and provide a way for kids to learn some of life's most important lessons. Lessons that will take them through life with a sense of accomplishment and pride. Otter Tail Power Company would like to salute those athletes, coaches, and fans who make every season one to remember. Go to Wesley and taking advantage of Andre Rodakowski being on the bench with four fouls. They fought back to within two. Jamestown still leads. 55, 53, 8, 10 left. And a hog on a high post for Kate Cordes. Drives to the right baseline, but Nagel cut her off. Cordes bounced to Martinson. Nine on the shot clock as it's Tower out front. Edelman guarding her tightly. Makes a move down the right lane line. Banks it in. Kaya Tower with 25 nearing her career high, which is 27. 57-53 Jamestown, 7.47 to play. Dakota Wesleyan, right corner. Wilson took the cross-court pass. Back out in uh, the old circle for a jumper by Yost. That's short, but the rebound by Rosenquist, and Riley laid it in. Four big buckets in the second half for Rosenquist. Back to a two-point Jamestown lead, 57-55. Still 7.25, a lot of time left. Kaya Tower with a hoggle screen. Out front, Cordes. Open, didn't take that three. Now she does, and it's off the back rim. Long rebound, and Jamestown can't hang on. Hoggle tipped it, Busick tipped it, then it went out of bounds, and Lacey Sprockle returns for Dakota Wesleyan, who can tie or lead this trip. They haven't led in the second half. 57-55, Jamestown, 7.05 to go. Edelman, down low to a cutting Rosenquist, layup good for a tie game at 57. 
the fifth tie. Jamestown, after leading 11, finds themselves in a tie game. Tower for Cordes to the right wing. Three good! Kate Cornis hits another timely three. Jamestown wants timeout. 6.44 left. Jamestown leads again over Dakota Wesleyan. 60 to 57 on Jamestown 107.1. This is the voice of the Jimmies. Where do you find the friendliest staff, largest selection, lowest prices, and the freshest produce? Hugo's in Jamestown. But what if you can't go to the store? Hugo's Family Marketplace offers online shopping. You can shop all the departments and all the sales at GoHugos.com. Choose pickup or Hugo's delivery service, and they'll do the in-store shopping for you. Hugo's Family Marketplace, online shopping at GoHugos.com. You're going to find more low prices, more great stuff when you go to Hugo's. Kate Corner's third three gives her 76 for the year, and again, not far from the single season program record. Megan Feetner set that in 98 99 with 83, but it was again most timely by Kate as it puts Jamestown back in front 60 to 57, 644 in left fourth quarter, Dakota Wesley in ball. Jamestown had an 11 point lead in this half. They had a big 15 to 2 run in the early part of this second half, but now Dakota Wesleyans come back. They tied it once in this fourth quarter a short time ago. Hayes on the right baseline, out front for Morgan Edelman. Edelman is called for an offensive foul. That's her fourth. Edelman with eight today, two in this half. She stays on the floor. And it's Jamestown ball with 6.15 left, up three over Dakota Wesleyan. 60 to 57 pass, ooh, didn't make it to Busick, ended up in a dual possession as Busick was able to catch it as she was tied up by Edelman, the arrow points to Jamestown. 19 on the shot clock. Again, the Jimmies, no, they will be on the road. Wednesday, the women anywhere from the fifth to the seventh seed, there are those possibilities. Cordes, left corner, Martinson open. Tries a baseline move and drive and score. Jaywin Martinson faked that three and then drove to the left block. She has seven. 62-57 Jamestown. They've scored the last five. 5.54 left. Dakota Wesley in basketball. With Hayes on the right wing. For Yost back up top to Maya Wilson. Edelman still out there and has four fouls, remember. It is Wilson with a baseline drive held fouled it's Jalen Martinson that's her third team foul number one in the fourth quarter on Jamestown Audrey Rudikowski still on the bench with four fouls she picked up her fourth foul with 19.4 seconds left in the third 538 remains in the fourth Edelman for Emma Yost out front hand to Riley Rosenquist for Dakota Wesleyan to the left block Finds Edelman in the lane. Backs to the left elbow. Misses the shot, but Riley Rosenquist has the offensive board. And then around a screen, Kaya Tower, a foul. She said, didn't she double dribble? And the official said, let me call the game. Her <laughs> second team foul number two. Tower made the double dribble motion, and the official just kind of said, no. Yost, right wing to Hayes. For Shalane Nagel playing a high post. It's Martinson to guard her. Right wing to Leah Hayes again. 10 on the shot clock for DWU. Lob to Yost in the lane for a cutting Nagel from 12. Shalane had it rim out. And another Kate Busick rebound to tower down floor. Right wing Cordes faked the three, moved to the right block, double team. So it's Hoggle. Now to Busick out front. Right wing Cordes moves to the right elbow, shoots and hits. 15 for Cornish, five big points in the fourth quarter for Kate. 64-57, Jamestown's back by seven. 444 left, three, Yost is good, her first one today, and that's her 13th of the year. And Dakota Wesleyan wants timeout. 440 to go, Jamestown 64, Dakota Wesleyan 60 on Jamestown 107.1. This is the voice of the Jimmies. Some of us were born to farm. 
Some diesels, like Cenex Premium Diesel, were born to fuel. Cenex Ruby Fieldmaster comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn to reduce particulate matter and keep filters cleaner for longer. Fuel your equipment like a pro with Cenex Ruby Fieldmaster and leave typical number two diesel to the amateurs. Cenex Premium Diesel, diesel that doesn't mess around. Here, Jamestown by four, 64, 60, 440 to go. The stunner continues in Orange City with Northwestern leading Dort. Unbeaten in the conference, Dort, 71-52, 618 left. Domes lead over Hastings now only 463-59 with four minutes left in Creed as the Tigers try to secure the eighth seed. Kaya Tower for Jamestown, right wing to Kate Cordes. Jimmy's up four, 425 to go. Cordes out front for Kate Busick. Lob it in the lane, Hannah Hoggle. Starts a drive, nine on the timer, turns around and hits a big hoop. First two and a half for Hannah. 66 to 60 Jamestown, 410 left. Morgan Edelman for Dakota Wesleyan. Screen by Yost, tower around that, now out front. Yost wants another three. This is an air ball and out of bounds. And it is going to be Jamestown basketball. The rebound a moment ago, by the way, for Kate Busick, was her ninth of this game. Her high is 13 rebounds, and Busick has the ball now. Hands off to Kate Cordes, right elbow, 14 on the shot clock. Middle of the right wing, it is Busick. Five points also for Kate Busick today. Out front to Cordes. Left wing to Towers, seven on the shot clock. Tries past Edelman, left block scores, ties her career high. She has 27. 68 to 60, Jamestown, 325 left. Kai, of course, did that at Doan when she had to shoot all those free throws in Crete on that Friday night. Rosenquist out front, touched, but the foul called. On Jalen Martinson, that's her fourth, and here comes Audrey Ronikowski back in. Third team foul with 319 left. So Rodakowski and Martinson both with four fouls. Jamestown by eight over Dakota Wesley. And 315 left. 68-60. It is the Yost. Right wing Nagel on the baseline. Used, used that elbow to clear off. They didn't call it. To Rosenquist in the lane. Left wing for Hayes for a three. Back rim. It's no good. Tapped out of bounds by Kate Busick and Jamestown. It'll stay with Dakota Wesleyan. 47% shooting for the game at this point for Jamestown. Dakota Wesleyan at 41%, so they've shot a little better. Of course, they had that run to come back and tie the game, but now they're down eight again. Into the right block for Hayes, who's fouled as she drove off an inbounds play on a set play. On Jalen Martinson, who's just fouled out. Team foul number four, the end of the day for Jalen Martinson, but Seven big second half points, but the Jimmys will have to do without her, and Megan Oswald is in. Hayes at the line for the first time. 74% shooter in the first is good. 68-61 for Jamestown over Dakota Wesleyan. 302 left. One more for Hayes. Good for her 12th point. Maya Wilson in for Riley Rosenquist for DWU. 302 left in the fourth. Jamestown 68. Dakota Wesleyan, 62. Well, Northwestern hangs on to that lead over Dort. The Jimmies would be at best the uh, sixth seed. Here's a drive by Rodakowski in the lane and draws a foul on Emma Yost. That's number two, and a good aggressive move by Audrey earns her free throws. She split a couple earlier. Jamestown 9 of 11 at the line today. First year, good. Eight for Audrey. 69-62 for the Jimmies over DWU. 2.45 to go. Second one on the way. Short. Rebound, Shalane Nagel and DWU. 2.40 left. Possessions becoming precious for Dakota Wesleyan. 
Again, a win if they can come back. They know they'll be at home. There's still a scenario where they could be the fifth seed if they lose, but more than likely they'd still be at home, but they don't win the tie break for third with Briarcliff. Into the lane, a jumper by Edelman, counted with a foul from seven feet. 10 for Edelman, makes it 69-64 for Jamestown. Megan Oswald with the foul is her first and team foul number five. Edelman's first two in this fourth quarter, 10 for the game. She tries to complete the three-point play and does. Back to a four-point Jamestown lead now. It's 69-65, 2.18 left. Eight-point lead a moment ago, cut in half. Rodakowski hands it to Kate Cordes up top for the Jamestown. 2.05 left, Akaya Tower, right wing. Cordes finds Busick on the left side, still around the perimeter into the corner to Oswald, sat on the shot clock. Busick down to five on the timer, Rodakowski screen. Busick to the right wing to Cordes in front of the bench. Desperation three off glass and a shot clock violation. Good perimeter fence there by Dakota Wesleyan and the Jimmies couldn't get anything close to a good look. Riley Rosenquist, who's had a big second half with all 10 in this half, back in for Dakota Wesleyan. 69-65 Jamestown, a minute 45 to go. Dakota Wesley in basketball. Morgan Edelman with tower to guard her. Hand it off now for Talia Hayes. Now to Riley Rosenquist. Makes another drive to the baseline. Up and under, left it short. Gained her own board, and it ends up in a dual possession. Stays with Dakota Wesleyan. With 11 on the shot clock. I thought that hit the rim. It did. Yep, they'll reset it to 20. Morgan Edelman, 131 left. Lob to Emma Yost, finds Rosenquist. Riley in the lane. Uh, went a hop, that's up and down. Missed the shot. And a foul as Kate Busick gained her 10th rebound. Rosenquist the foul after she, she got away with an up and down, but now she commits the foul, her second in team foul number three. You can't hop. Why is that not called anymore? Maya Wilson comes in. Anyway, it worked out for Jamestown. The Jimmies have the ball and a four-point lead. 69-65, a minute 18 to go. Busick hands off to Kaya Tower. 113 to play. Rodakowski on a very high post, and Yost not near. Right wing on the angle, Megan Oswald. 105 left. Lob to Rodakowski in the lane. There's Yost on her. Rodakowski falls, and it ends up in a dual possession. This will keep it with Jamestown. 59.7 to go. Six on the Jimmy shot clock and a crucial possession here for James Down. It was a four point lead, 69-65. Busick, right corner Rodakowski. Audrey, three on the timer, two. Cornice, a three at the shot clock buzzer off the rim. Oswald tipped the rebound to herself. What a play by Megan. And James Down wants timeout after a huge rebound by Megan Oswald. We'll take the break to 49.3 to go. Jamestown holding on to a 69-65 lead over Dakota Wesley. And on Jamestown 107.1, this is the voice of the Jimmies. At Unison Bank, we provide financial solutions for customers to meet their needs today and achieve their dreams tomorrow. From personal banking services like checking accounts, mortgage, and auto loans, to business banking services. At Unison Bank, we offer financial solutions with prompt responses and quality service. Visit unisonbank.com for more information. Located in Jamestown, Linton, and Wishick, as well as Gilbert, Arizona. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Well, despite a huge rebounding advantage by Dakota Wesley, and it's 43-26, to 26, but... That one stretch early in the second half helped turn this game in Jamestown's favor. They've led by 11 in this half. They've led by 8 in this fourth quarter. Their lead is 6 now with 49.3 left over Dakota Wesley and 69, 65, 17 on the shot clock. But what a rebound. Megan Oswald just made a moment ago, tipped the ball to herself off to miss to keep it with the Jimmies, who are down to one timeout. Dakota Wesleyan has three. Five team fouls on Jamestown, so DWU's in the bonus. 
Three team fouls on the Tigers, and Dakota Wesleyan has the arrow pointing to them. Kate Busick inbounds to Kaya Tower. 13 on the shot clock, all the way out near the center circle, guarded by Hayes. Once a screen, nine to shoot. Left wing quarter, seven on the shot clock. Starts to drive on Rosenquist into the lane. Runner off the rim. Oswald, another big rebound, and the Jimmy still have it. 28 seconds left. Two huge boards by Megan Oswald. Now a foul on Dakota Wesleyan. And Oswald, her teammates saying, way to go for those two big, big boards. Second foul on Hayes. It's only the fourth team foul on DWU. Jamestown inbounds. Busick to Tower in the backcourt. She is fouled. Another one by Hayes. Puts Jamestown into the bonus with 24 and a half seconds to go. And at the line, Kaya Tower will try to establish a new career high. She's tied it at the moment with 27. Did so in the game at Doan last month. First of two here for the fifth year senior. Good. 28 for Kaya and what a show she's putting on in her last regular season home game. 70 to 65 Jamestown. This one's big two for the Jimmies. On the way and on the board. 29 for Kaya. And now Dakota Wesleyan wants timeout. 24 and a half seconds to play. It is Jamestown 71, Dakota Wesleyan 65, and we'll keep it here during this timeout. As Kaya Tower with 29 today now is at 1,768 points, and that is only 33 away from Carrie Baker's school record. So, yeah, there is a chance, depending on how the Jimmies do in the postseason, that Kaya Tower could become this program's all-time leading scorer. What a day she is having today in what could be her last game on this floor. As Thad Sankey said in the pregame, it was the second year of this building, or at least the second year in the G-Pack anyway, in the third year of this building, when Kaya began here. 24 and a half seconds left. Dakota Wesley in ball in a 71-65 Jamestown lead. Each team's in the bonus. Two timeouts left for Dakota Wesleyan and one for Jamestown. Possession arrow points to Dakota Wesleyan. The Jimmies are Tower, Cordes, Busick, Oswald, Rodakowski. What about those two rebounds Megan Oswald made? Hayes, Edelman, Yost, Nagel, Rosenquist for Dakota Wesleyan. It is Rosenquist right away. 17 seconds to go drive. Foul. That's it for Rodakowski. If it's on Audrey, I think it is. It is. Eight for Audrey today in her final regular season home game. Some stand, including her family, that are here again from Dickinson. But at the line here is Rosenquist, who has 10 and a half. 75% foul shooter trying to cut into the six point Jimmy lead. First one's good. 71 66, 16 seconds left. Rosenquist ready for that second one, already hunched over. One dribble, shoots, hits. And another timeout. This one's by Jamestown with 16 seconds left. That's the Jimmy's last timeout. We'll keep it here again. So. The Jimmies must go the rest of the way, and they hope it's only 16 more seconds without Audrey Rodakowski, who was just fouled out. 71-67 for Jamestown. And a Hoggle back in there, and Hoggle has three. So Rodakowski and Martinson have both fouled out, but those two rebounds that Oswald playing in, in uh, Martinson's face may, uh, 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 space may have saved this game for Jamestown, but there are still 16 seconds to go. Men's action still ahead for you here on Jamestown 107.1, so please stay here with us, and what a good one this has been. Great game. And it is over in Orange City. Northwestern defeats Dort 81-63. Wow. 
So that puts Northwestern at 14 and eight. Briarcliff beat Morningside 74-65. So Briarcliff clinches the three seed. Busick will inbound to Cornish, who waits to be found. She is with 14.6 to go. It's Riley Rosenquist with her third. Briarcliff beat Morningside 74-65. Seven seconds left in Crete. Doan trying to clinch the eighth seed is holding on to a two-point lead over Hastings, 68-66. Cordes with a first of two, misses. But it is a two-possession lead, so it would still behoove Kate to hit this one and make it a five-point game. She's good. 16 for Cordes. Timeout, Dakota Wesley, and again, we'll keep it here. 72-67, Jamestown down to 14.6 to go. So, we know now that Briarcliff is the third seed. And if Jamestown hangs on, well, we'll just see how it is. I'm not going to guess. I messed up on the Blue Jay girls, but can we have a scenario where Dakota Wesleyan could be the five seed if they lose, and that would mean them going on the road. So we'll just see how it all shakes out, but Northwestern coming up with the big upset of Dort, the defender's first conference loss, their first loss in NAIA play this year. The only other Dort loss had been to NCAA Division I, South Dakota State. 14.6 left. Dakota Wesley in the ball. Jamestown with the lead. 72-67. It's into Morgan Edelman. Screened by Yost. Edelman walk. That will do it for DWU. Edelman was indecisive. Yost was calling for the ball. One and a three, but Edelman lifted the pivot foot, and Jamestown has it back with 9.3. It's into Tower. She'll have another chance at the line, and she's fouled by Rosenquist. And the Jimmies are going to go into the postseason tournament with a pretty good win, a really good win. This is a solid team that they're about to be. And after a rough night against Briarcliff, and Briarcliff helped make that so, the Jimmies have responded today, thanks in part to Miss Tower. On her final regular season home game on this floor, she's short on this free throw, but she still is a point away from her first 30-point game in her college career. She has another with 7.9 left. Good for 30. 73 67, Jamestown. Tower almost stole the inbound pass. It's into Edelman. Four seconds left and three. It's Yost out front. She'll try a long three that banks and misses and put it in the record book, baby, and ring that victory bell for a very good win to take into the postseason for the Jamestown Jimmies. As they knock off Dakota Wesleyan, 73 to 67. And Kaya Tower in her final regular season game on this floor has a career game with 30 points. She helped a big run in the early part of the third quarter that turned this game into Jamestown's favor. And the Jimmies come up with this is an awfully, awfully solid win against a pretty good basketball team. And I'll tell you this, head coach Van Sanke, uh, we talked about it before the game, and you emphasize this is a solid team. And uh, your team, especially first part of that third quarter, while you had the run, what a job your team did defensively on them. Absolutely. And, um, they, man, to go to Wesleyan is so tough. And um, we really had to dig deep for that for that second half. And, um it was awesome to see our girls do it. What, what a great, you know, what a great win. It certainly was. And what a day Kaya Tower had. And we talked in the pregame about all of, uh, you, you talk about it, the leadership pieces she has for this team, a career high today in points. But uh, uh, 
Tower knew this was, uh, Kaya knew this was a big special day for her, not just with the points, but with all the other things she did today, did so much for you. Yeah, it, you know, we're, we're on a mission to get back to the national tournament. We, mm -hmm. we have big things. We, we talked about that as a team. We're going to recognize our seniors. They're incredible. But at what our team is doing is, is a big deal, you know, and, and it, it's awesome to see Kaya get that. Holy cow. But, like, just being on a mission to, to get to that next step is, is really huge. I'll bring up a team thing, but I'll mention an individual player. <laughs> the two rebounds on the offensive end, Megan Oswald yeah. had for you, probably saved the game for you. Yeah, well, she, she just fights it out every time and, um, you know, stays, stays locked in. And there's been a couple games where Megan's come in and, and finished games for us, you know, at Briarcliff. Um, I know there was another one, and I can't think of what it is, and then tonight. And, mm -hmm. and you know, she's, she's a versatile defender. She's worked so hard to be able to, to switch and be in those finishing lineups for us. And, um, man, what an what energy giver on, on that offensive end. Well, this is something really good to, to take into where you'll go on the road, and we'll, we'll get it all straightened out. But I can tell you, Northwestern defeated Dort today. So there's just a, another indication that... This is uh, this is the G Pack, and it's a tough league, and anything can happen. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, well, we'll figure out where we're going. You you just told me that, and I have no idea what the heck's going to happen now when we look at the brackets. But uh, I just love the way our girls battled it out today. Yeah, they certainly did. It took a lot of work to win this game against a good team, and head coach Thad Sankey, congratulations, Thank terrific you. win for Thank your you. team. Thank you, sir. That's Anki as uh, his Jimmy's um, move on to the postseason. Now, again, they're going on the road. We do know that. But we'll get that figured out by the people who are paid to figure that out. But anyway, they play on the road on Wednesday night, but they go in after a very solid win today. Final score over Dakota Lesbian, 73-67 for Jamestown here at Harold Newman Arena. The applause you're hearing is the start of the recognition for the men's basketball seniors. And as we talked to before, there are several. There are five. Colby Vasquez, only one year here, but uh, well, what a what a job he's done for this team. And Jimmy Linus uh, being recognized also. And uh, the other seniors on this team, of course, Christian Leeds is a fifth year player. And also Cole Woodford and, of course, Will Cordes, all being recognized here. So that'll happen before the warm-ups happen for the men's game. But we still have the women's game to recap for you, and we'll do that next. The most important number on the scoreboard for a very good win for Jamestown. They end the regular season. They're last in the G-Pack at 13-9, and 17-11 overall. Dakota Wesleyan ends at 14-8 and eight in the G-Pack at 19-9 and nine overall. Jamestown 73, Dakota Wesleyan 67. More coming up for you here on Jamestown 107.1. This is the Voice of the Jimmies. You know you don't really want that hurry up bought on the cheap, not sure what I got insurance coverage. Good, because Farmers Union Insurance agents do things just a little different. We'll work with you personally for home, auto, business, or farm insurance and tailor the exact coverage plan you need because we're not satisfied until you are. Different, you bet. Farmers Union Insurance, simply different. Good luck to the Blue Jays and Jimmies from your local Farmers Union agent, Steve Benyon. Not all products underwritten by Farmers Union Insurance. Two Rivers Activity Center in Jamestown is now hiring. Track has openings for several part-time positions. Track offers a flexible schedule. We will work with you to make a schedule that fits your busy lifestyle. Track also offers a fun work atmosphere, and every employee of JPRD receives an employee pass, which provides free green fees at Hillcrest Golf Course, complimentary open skate at the Winter Sports Building, and free daily admission into Two Rivers Activity Center. Learn more about our open positions and apply online today at trackjamestown.com. Before you can start building a business, you have to have great builders. Hillerud Construction is a builder of high-quality commercial buildings, and they're hiring talented labor and carpenters to help them do just that. Vacation, paid holidays, 401K, and health insurance benefits for full-time employees, plus great pay depending on experience. Apply at 1008 2nd Avenue Southeast, Jamestown, or visit hillerudconstruction.com. Again, visit hillerudconstruction.com, and let's get building. 
Why choose professional eye care centers? Let me count the whys. First, there are now four great doctors to see. Dr. Frank, Dr. Freilich, Dr. Jangula, and now welcoming Dr. Bond. Next is their many locations. You can now see one of their spectacular doctors in Jamestown, Valley City, Carrington, Edgeley, Ellendale, and Lemoore. And finally, their fantastic frame selection. And yes, all of their frames and lenses are backed up by warranty. Visit ProEyeCareCenters.com and make an appointment today. Professional eye care centers, clearly the best. Forecast details from Ag Central for the rest of the day. High temps in the lower 50s, breezy south southwest winds gusting into the 30s, cloudy overnight, lows in the mid 20s. And for the rest of Sunday, mostly sunny highs back up to around 40. Sunday night, cloudy lows around 31. And by Monday, mostly sunny highs will reach near 60. A chance of rain or snow before midnight Monday night, lows around 11. For more weather anytime, log on to NewsDakota.com. Gene Sound Jimmy's going to the postseason in women's basketball after a good win. 73-67 over Dakota Wesleyan today at Harold Newman Arena as Kaya Tower best her career high. She had 27 in that game in Doan last month. Today, 30 for Kaya. 10 of 14 shooting, and the shooting's been a little bit of a struggle this year for Kaya, but not today. Four of seven on threes, six of eight at the foul line. She also had four assists. 16 for Kate Cordes, just five of 16 shooting, but Cordes had a couple of big buckets in that second half and three threes today. Eight points for Audrey Rodakowski before she fouled out. Three rebounds also for Audrey, three for nine. Emma Yost was giving her fits defensively today. Jalen Martinson, seven before she found out. Three of three shooting for Jalen today. Had a three-point play included in that. Kate Busick, five, but with ten rebounds. Four for Hannah Hoggle, three for Samantha Paulson. And again, I'll point out those two just enormous offensive rebounds that Megan Oswald had in the last 30 seconds that kept the ball with Jamestown and kept them at the line. Four players in double figures for Dakota Wesleyan. Emma Yost had 13, six of 14 shooting, 12 for Riley Rosenquist off the bench, five of 11 shooting. Talia Hayes also with 12, she had two threes. Morgan Edelman 11, but just three of 11 for her. Eight rebounds, Shalene Nagel with nine and six boards. Four points for Malia Estes, three each for Anna Campbell and Lacey Sprockle. 46% shooting for Jamestown today on 25 of 55. 12 of 23 on threes, 14 of 19 at the line. 40% shooting for Dakota Wesley and 25 of 63. Just four of 19 on threes. That really hurt them today. 13 of 15 at the line. Big DWU rebounding advantage at 43 to 20.